Microsoft under the microscope, your news update, and we play with Lego again on this edition of Arbitrage News Weekend starting right now. Hello and welcome to Arbitrage News Weekend for September 17th, 2022. I'm Joshua Stark. Microsoft's $69 billion deal to buy video game company Activision Blizzard faces an in-depth antitrust investigation in Britain after the tech company refused to offer proposals to ease competition concerns. Britain's Competition Markets Authority said Thursday that it was referring the blockbuster deal for more scrutiny under a so-called Phase 2 investigation. The watchdog said that based on the available information, the deal may be expected to result in a substantial lessening of competition in the United Kingdom. The all-cash deal, which is expected to be the largest in the history of the tech industry, is facing scrutiny from competition regulators around the world. It would give Microsoft, maker of the Xbox console and gaming system, control of popular game franchises such as Call of Duty, World of Warcraft, and Candy Crush. Stocks fell broadly in afternoon trading on Wall Street Friday, putting the market on track for another week of sizable losses. The latest discouraging news for traders came from corporate giants FedEx and General Electric, which warned about worsening trends in the economy hurting business. The S&P 500 fell 1.2% as of 12.01 p.m. Eastern. The benchmark index is down 5.2% for the week with much of the loss coming from a rout on Tuesday following a surprisingly hot report on inflation. Oktoberfest is back in Germany after two years of pandemic cancellations. The same bicep challenging beer mugs, fat dripping pork knuckles, pretzels the size of dinner plates, men in leather shorts, and women in cleavage bearing traditional dresses. But while brewers are more than glad to see the return of the Bavarian capital's Sudsy tourist centerpiece, both they and visitors are under pressure from inflation in a way that could scarcely be imagined the last time it was held in 2019. For one thing, the one liter two pint mug beer will cost between 1260 and 1380 euros this year, which is an increase of about 15% compared with 2019, according to the official Oktoberfest homepage. Uber said Thursday that it reached out to law enforcement after a hacker apparently breached its network. A security engineer said the intruder provided evidence of obtaining access to crucial systems of the ride hailing service. There was no indication that Uber's fleet of vehicles or its operation was in any way affected. It seems like they've compromised a lot of stuff, said Sam Curry, an engineer with Yuga Labs who communicated with the hacker. That includes complete access to the Amazon and Google hosted cloud environments where Uber stores its source code and customer data, he said. Curry said he spoke to several Uber employees who said they were working to lock down everything internally to restrict the hacker's access. That included the San Francisco company's Slack internal messaging network, he said. More after this on Arbitrage News Weekend, including more with Royce and We Play With Legos. Stick around. It's Thursday night, and you're grabbing drinks with some friends. Start it off with a pitcher for the table, which quickly becomes two. There's pool. And there's the photo booth. All right, everybody, squeeze in. Say cheese. Followed naturally by an order of wings. And another. Can we get some extra ranch sauce? Then there's the ceremonial nightcap. So what are we doing this weekend? And lastly, it's back to the car, which, if you're buzzed... ...could be the most expensive night of your life. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving, because buzz driving is drunk driving. 
Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. This week's ArbitrageTrade.com blog includes AI is ruining everything. Bill Gates on world hunger. And Royce and I play with Lego. Again. Yeah. All this and more in this week's Arbitrage blog available now at ArbitrageTrade.com. Now let's go to the president and chief Lego creator of Arbitrage, Mr. Royce Wells, for more. Royce! Yes, sir. So, do you have a pet? I don't even know if you have pets. Seriously. We have a bunch of pets. We have a bunch of fish. Lots fish. of fish. Fish. A bazillion fish. All my kids wanted fish. And so that means separate tanks for each fish because guess what? Koi's don't get along with uh, blood uh, blood parrots. That's something like that. Bloods yeah. and crypts. I don't know. I got, I got nothing. Anyway, <laughs> have you ever <laughs> looked at your pet? And went, I wonder what it wants to say to me. Um, dude, I can always tell. You can always tell what it wants to say to you? Oh, yeah. When the fish are hungry, they're like, dude, water. I need some food up here. Can you, can you put something up here for me? You're like, we're, 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 we got nothing. <laughs> well, thanks to the power of AI, you may now be able to. But in what language? Dog language. So not it's not going to translate it to English or Japanese or Chinese, Korean, you know, Vietnamese. So okay, Thai. For, first of all, you need to know that AI AI kind of are a core component of machine learning algorithms, right? Uh, yeah. There's that dirty word again. What dirty word? Algorithm. Machine learning. Oh, machine learning. Yeah. So there's five groups of researchers making machine learning algorithms to research. Like the calls of a select few mammals. Okay. So if you've worked with mathematic models, which no, I don't no, do that. Not no, not often. Not, not every day no, of my life. No, we we don't do that <laughs> around here at all. Uh, if you work with math models, you know that um, that. Wait, we can model with math. Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> in most cases, that's later on in the show. In All most right. cases, uh, in most cases with mathematical Just models, like babies, the, kids, the AI needs multiply. training data <laughs> to learn from, and then the model is refined as the AI gains experience through new data. Yes. So, in order to build a new mathematical model, there must be plenty of good data for the model to learn. Right? We like the data. So, yeah. Um, the crux of the issue here is that we're not 100% sure of all the data points that we need, right? Um, yeah, and then there's type 2 errors. But don't get me started on that. I'm curious. <sighs> we may. I don't know. Maybe for another segment. Another, for another session, segment. Yeah, type 2 errors are but so see, frustrating. Here's the thing. We, we can't do Google Translate to a dog, right? So, a wag of the tail could mean it wants to play or it loves you or, you know, something. Could mean it's trying to get a fly off of its, you know, tail or something. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, in, in in that mind, you know, we can't go to Google Translate and go dog to English. Sure we can. Grab the leash, I promise you. <laughs> so, that's, that's part of the problem that we have here. And, and there are certain groups that are trying to trying to mitigate those problems uh, with AI and trying to figure out what's going on there, trying to get some regular data points on what is said with an animal. And uh, more in that article on arbitragetrade.com blog. We'll see you in a few minutes. Hi, we're the Goo Goo Dolls. We're fortunate that we can give our daughters everything they need to grow and learn. But not every child can focus on classes and play dates. Nearly 13 million kids in the U.S. face hunger. That's one in six. School lunch might be their only meal each day, and it's heartbreaking to imagine any child going to bed hungry. We're dreaming of a perfect day when kids can smile, play, and just be kids without worrying about where their next meal will come from. Feeding America is working to make that perfect day a reality. Each year, the Feeding America network of food banks rescues billions of pounds of good food that would have gone to waste. That food is given to families and children in need. Being a kid should be about doing things that make an ordinary day extraordinary. Learning to play an instrument, building a sandcastle, hosting tea parties. Hunger should never be an obstacle to growing up. You can help end childhood hunger in your community by visiting feedingamerica.org. 
Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. The former security chief at Twitter told Congress that the social media platform is plagued by weak cyber defenses that make it vulnerable to exploitation by teenagers, thieves, and spies, and put the privacy of its users at risk. Peter Mudge Zatko, a respected cybersecurity expert, appeared before the Senate Judiciary Committee to lay out his allegations this week. I am here today because Twitter leadership is misleading the public, lawmakers, regulators, and even its own board of directors, Zatko said as he began his sworn testimony. They don't know what data they have, where it lives, and where it came from, and so, unsurprisingly, they can't protect it, Zatko said. It doesn't matter who has keys if there are no locks. Zatko continued saying, Twitter leadership ignored its engineers in part because their executive incentives led them to prioritize profit over security. His message echoed one brought to Congress against another social media giant last year, but unlike that Facebook whistleblower Francis Haugen, Zatko hasn't brought troves of internal documents to back up his claims. Zatko was the head of security for the influential platform until he was fired Early this year, he filed a whistleblower complaint in July with Congress, the Justice Department, the Federal Trade Commission, and the Securities and Exchange Commission. Among his most serious accusations is that Twitter violated the terms of a 2011 FTC settlement by falsely claiming that it had put stronger measures in place to protect the security and privacy of its users. Senator Dick Durbin, an Illinois Democrat who leads the Judiciary Committee, said Zatko has detailed flaws that may pose a direct threat to Twitter's hundreds of millions of users as well as to American democracy. Twitter is an immensely powerful platform and can't afford gaping vulnerabilities, he said. Unknown to Twitter users, there's far more personal information disclosed than they or sometimes even Twitter itself realize Zatko testified. He said basic systemic failures that were brought forward by company engineers were not addressed. The FTC has been a little over its head and far behind European counterparts in policing the sort of privacy violations that have occurred at Twitter, Zatko said. Zatko's claim could also affect Tesla billionaire Elon Musk's attempt to back out of his $44 billion deal to acquire the social platform. Musk claims that Twitter has long underreported spam bots on its platform and cites that as a reason to nix the deal he struck in April. Many of Zatko's claims are uncorroborated and appear to have little documentary support. Twitter has called Zatko's description of events a false narrative, riddled with inconsistencies and inaccuracies, and lacking important context. Among the assertions from Zatko that drew attention from Lawmakers Tuesday was that Twitter knowingly allowed the government of India to place its agents on the company payroll where they had access to highly sensitive data on users. Twitter's lack of ability to log how employees accessed user accounts made it hard for the company to detect when employees were abusing their access, Zatko said. Zatko also accuses the company of deception in its handling of automated spam bots or fake accounts. We'll follow this story as it develops more after this on Arbitrage News Weekend. Okay, so Sarah, I'm dropping you off at Emily's? Yep. And Josh, you're going to? Soccer, Dad. Soccer practice. Right. Oh, by the way, I just wanted to let you know when I pick you both up, I'll be wearing my short shorts. What? No! Yep, and my dorky dad hat, and I'm going to do my dad dance for all your friends. They'll love it! Seriously? Why? Because I like my short shorts. Of course, I could be talked out of it if you guys would just buckle up your seatbelts without giving me a hard time. It's important to get your kids to buckle up for safety, no matter what it takes. And sometimes, all it takes is your parental powers of persuasion. Okay, okay, we're buckling up. See, all buckled. Good choice. I'll just have to do my dad dance at dinner time. What, what? No! 
Do what you have to to make sure your kids are wearing their seatbelts, even on short drives. Never give up until they buckle up. A message from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Visit safercar.gov slash kidsbuckleup for more information. We know that the Queen is, is gone. Uh, Unfortunately, Her, Her yes. Majesty Queen Elizabeth II uh, passed at 96 yes. this past week Very after a reign of 70 years. That's amazing. Now, Royce, she touched our presidency a court. No, I'm sorry. A third of our presidency, our sitting presidency, um, a third of those presidents saw the Queen uh, Queen Elizabeth II. Uh, they either interacted with her or uh, she had some sort of touch with, with them. Uh, some interesting interactions, as a matter of fact. Um with the queen but she uh she actually has has talked to uh 13 of our presidents with wow. the exception of Lyndon Bain Johnson um who was focused on trying to get the country back together after the uh assassination of John F Kennedy and uh did not get a chance to speak to him oh wow but right. she went horseback riding with Ronald Reagan Oh, wow. Yachting with Bill Clinton. Interesting. Uh, she had tea with Joe. Uh, okay. Which, you know, that that was recent. Yeah. But uh, she met with every American president since Dwight Eisenhower. Carter, too? Carter, as well. Huh. Carter, as well. Excellent. As a matter of fact, uh, if you look on our website at arbitragetrade.com, we've got stories about how she met... Uh, some of our presidents, including Carter, as a matter of fact. Oh, nice. Uh, Carter was... Extraordinary uh, lady. Absolutely, absolutely. Carter was hosted uh, by the Queen uh, as part of a NATO leaders at Buckingham Palace dinner. And uh, uh, he escorted her. He literally escorted her to the to the front of the line, as, as it were. So, oh, wow. He's a southern gentleman. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, which of course was against uh, against the the Queen's policy. You don't touch the Queen. Right. Obama touched really? the Queen. Yeah. Did he really? Uh, Interesting. Trump goes in front of the Queen. These things we didn't know about. You know, we we don't have a monarchy here. We have a, a representative uh, democracy, a republic. In which case, our, our president is for the most part, accessible. Uh, But there were some faux pas that were done. As a matter of fact, Gerald Ford took her out on the dance floor and danced with her. Nice! To to Lady is a Tramp. That's why the lady is a tramp. Seriously. Seriously. Interesting. Well, hey, she went to took to the floor, and she probably cut a mean rug, too. I would love to have seen that. I would have as well. Yeah, there may be there may be footage of it. We'll have to take a look. But uh we have, you know, stories of going horseback riding with Ronald Reagan, which is something that blows my mind. As a matter of fact, uh the weather changed and she didn't want to get off the horse. Oh wow. She wanted to keep riding. And Ronald Reagan in his in his imitable way uh served the queen quesadillas and refried beans for supper. Okay. <laughs> we we have had an interesting history with the Queen, and you can check that out at arbitragetrade.com, as well as our retrospective of QE2, where we uh, air two speeches uh, back-to-back. It's very interesting. More after this. No word in the English language is less convincing than probably. Are you sure we should get matching tattoos on our first date? Sure. Um, We'll probably stay together. Probably? (laughs) It's been 23 minutes since I ate. I can probably swim. Uh, you should wait 30 minutes. Mm, Okay, now tell me what to do. Cannonball! Cramp! Oh, I have a cramp. I can probably hit the green from here. Probably. Can I get a mulligan? Ready to go? Hey, are you sure you're okay to drive? Yeah, I'm pretty sober. 
Yeah, I'm probably okay. Probably okay isn't okay, especially when it comes to drinking and driving. If you're drinking, call a cab, a car, or a friend. Buzz driving is drunk driving. A message brought to you by NHTSA and the Ad Council. Bill Gates says the global hunger crisis is so immense that food aid cannot fully address the problem. What's also needed, Gates argues, are the kinds of innovations in farming technology that he has long funded to try to reverse the crisis documented in a report released Tuesday by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Gates points in particular to a breakthrough he calls Magic Seeds, crops engineered to do adapt to climate change and resist agricultural pests. The Gates Foundation on Tuesday also released a map that models how climate change will likely affect growing conditions for crops in various countries to highlight the urgent need for action. In assigning technology a preeminent role in addressing the world's food crisis, Gates puts himself at odds with critics who say his ideas conflict with worldwide efforts to protect the environment. They note that such seeds generally need pesticides and fossil fuel-based fertilizers to grow. Critics also contend that Gates' approach doesn't address the urgency of the crisis. Developing magic seeds takes years and won't immediately deliver relief to countries currently enduring widespread suffering because they rely on food imports or are experiencing historic droughts. It's a debate that could intensify international pressure to meet the shared goals for global prosperity and peace known as the UN Sustainable Development Goals ahead of a 2030 deadline. The 17 goals include ending poverty and hunger, battling climate change, providing access to clean water, working toward gender equality, and reducing economic inequality. It's pretty bleak relative to our hopes for 2030, Gates, 66, said in an interview with the Associated Press. He added, though, I'm optimistic that we can get back on track. Gates pointed to the war in Ukraine and the pandemic as the main causes for the worsening hunger crisis, but his message to other donors and world leaders convening for the UN General Assembly this September is that food aid won't be enough. It's good that people want to prevent their fellow human beings from starving when conflicts like Ukraine interrupt the food supply, Gates writes in the new report. But the real problem, he says, is that many food insecure countries don't produce enough of their own food, a problem sure to be exacerbated by the consequences of climate change. Temperature cheap keeps going up, Gates said. There is no way without innovation to come even close to feeding Africa. I mean, it just doesn't work. As he has for more than 15 years, Gates called for investment in agricultural research, highlighting corn seeds that thrive at higher temperatures and in drier conditions than other varieties. These seeds were developed under a program of the African Agricultural Technology Foundation, to which the foundation has given $131 million since 2008. Since then, the Gates Foundation has spent $1.5 billion on grants focused on agriculture in Africa, according to Candid, a nonprofit that researches philanthropic giving. The Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation is, by some measures, the largest private foundation in the world and is best known for its work on global health, including vaccines. It began its current form in 2000 after Gates left his CEO position at Microsoft, the tech giant he co-founded. More after this on Arbitrage News Weekend. Why was the basketball court all wet? Because the players kept dribbling on it. <laughs> the dad joke. Corny, groan-worthy, but also one of the simplest ways to share a moment with your kids. What did the buffalo say when he dropped his son off for school? Bye, son. <laughs> so take a moment to make your kid laugh, because dad jokes rule. Make your kid laugh today. Go to fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. Adopt U.S. Kids presents What to Expect When You're Expecting. A teenager. Learning the lingo. Jelly. Jelly adjective. Jelly is a shorter, better way to say jealous. As in... 
Chloe, I am like so jelly of your unicorn phone case. You don't have to speak teen to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. Visit AdoptUSKids.org. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Adopt US Kids, and the Ad Council. Royce, what was your first Lego set? My very first, I think, Lego set was Castle Grayskull. He meant. Really? Yes, sir. Nice. Yep. So I remember uh, back when I was a kid, it was Lego set 722. Oh, nice. It was a very basic set. My parents couldn't afford very much, and I'm very grateful about that. Um, but uh, it was one that you could do just about anything with. You could build a tractor trailer or a house or, you know, a helicopter. I remember the helicopter especially. I loved that. Oh, yeah. Well, Being a pilot, I think, yeah, definitely influenced you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, one of the things that I've noticed over the last few years, and we talked about back in December, was the value of Lego. Uh, we definitely welcome our A-Falls, which are adult fans of Lego, but there are uh, investors now in Lego, and we had a report about a Russian uh, Institute of Finance, or Economics, excuse me, uh, talking about Lego as an investment. Well, according to the study, we're... You know, you're used to things that we buy like stocks and, you know, we do Forex trading here and that sort of thing. And you, you kind of lead us in that. Mm -hmm. I'm going to lead you for one. Buy right. some Lego. All right. I'll buy some Lego. No, invest in some Lego. But you got to buy it, technically. Technically. But then <laughs> that means hold on to it and then yep. at one point or another, you Actually, still got to sell. Does. Actually, it does. So let, let's talk about this for a moment. For our last article, we bought uh, 10281, our bonsai tree, sitting here in the office. And according to BrickEconomy.com, who helped out with this article quite a bit, that particular investment hasn't gone too well. At retail, we bought the set for $49.99. Now, piece count, that was a good deal. Uh, at the writing of this article, most sites have it listed at about $40. Now, here's a crucial thing. It's still available in retail, so that kind of that kind of skews it, as well as the 10280 flower bouquet, which is uh, in another office with us. Um, it was bought at $59.99. It's dropped 6%. So why buy these sets? Well... If you're needing pieces, that's actually a good, good way to get mm -hmm. pieces uh, if you're building. But the idea here is to keep sealed sets. Um, currently, we have, uh, we have our, uh, our Lunar Lander in here that I just, yes. I actually... Eight 16 plus. I could see that. What, 1,087 <laughs> pieces? Yeah. Holy cow. How long did that take to put together? About four hours, uh, but hey. that's because I was taking pictures as I go. Hey, we'll have that up. That's part of the, the experience. Uh, here's the thing. It's a bargain at $100, 1,087 uh, uh, pieces, and yes, I'm keeping count, Royce. Uh, it's about $0.09 cents a piece. Uh, it is still available, but Creator Expert Sets, which is this is one of those, are going up ridiculously. Uh, really? The first creator expert set was the Fire Brigade. Uh, now sells for six hundred ninety-one dollars at three hundred and sixty percent ROI. Oh wow! Yeah, get some Lego. Have a great weekend. We'll see you on Monday. Lego my ego. Knew you just had to do that. Absolutely. Arbitrage Trade Analytics, LLC, is a privately held market research company. Arbitrage Trade Analytics, LLC, is solely responsible for the preparation and distribution of the content of this podcast. The opinions offered in this podcast are for informational purposes only and are not intended to be investment advice. Seek a duly licensed professional for investment advice. For more information about the informational research and services offered by Arbitrage Trade Analytics, LLC, please visit Arbitrage 